necessarily um, didn't necessarily think that it would work particularly well with review of the strategies necessarily, but um, I mean, I think assuming people have reviewed the strategies at this point, we could take that approach. I don't know who's looked at it or not. Okay. Um, <clears throat> well, I'll just I'll just hand it over to either one of you who wants to um, discuss the strategies and goals. Um, okay, that's cool. Let me um, let me share my screen really quickly. So we haven't gone over the strategies yet. Not as, resources. not as a group. Not, not with the larger group. Okay. As a as a group, we did the aspirations and the goals. Um, because I really couldn't go through and compile the strategies until we until had, we had the goals, right. which okay. we did. So then I went through and compiled them to make this draft for you guys to consider. And so, just to take a kind of thirty thousand foot view with this, um, the working group met. This is back in June, I feel like, um, and we worked through sort of the implementation strategies document and sort of reworked some of the structure there. And we collapsed things down to a single aspiration, uh, reshuffled some of the goals to better group them under that single aspiration. And we generally left the strategies in place. I think the, and correct me if I'm wrong, Stephanie or Marcella, but I think our thinking was at the time that the strategies seem to be in pretty good shape. And so I think our preliminary thinking was, was they were probably in a good spot to be able to release to the public and then we would do some further refining of those strategy, strategies based on that public feedback at, you know, at that point. Um, if, you know, so with that said, is we can walk through some of these uh, strategies. You know, like I said, I, I think that they're in pretty good shape. I think there's one strategy that I have some questions about, which is um, number 16, which is the development of a carbon sequestration management plan. Um, I just, it, it seems, I'm not sure if it is a, medium resource type of type of uh, undertaking and it seems a little thin to me but um you know i'm certainly not opposed to leaving it in right now and see how what, what sort of public comments we get in response to it other than that i think that uh generally the parks commission the conservation commission and the other groups that worked on this have done a pretty good job of identifying some pretty high value strategies uh most significantly i think the mapping uh, strategies that are at the front end of this list i think uh you know have a lot of value going forward and, and um, is really sort of a good springboard to for all the other uh, strategies that you know, they want to pursue going forward so i think that's again that's a very broad sort of overview of i think the subcommittee's view of the strategy section right now um, but if anybody wants to talk about any of this stuff in more detail let's add that in So I guess I can mention real quick, the, the first three obviously are all kind of tied together. The first one being the inventory, and then that leads to the mapping program in the development constraints mapping program. Um, it was, uh, th there were a couple of ways this could have been boxed. You know, we talk about the, all the, the, the five Ps, you know, you can do planning, permits, programs, policies, and projects. and. So that we classified these as programs for the mapping programs rather than a, than a plan or a one-time study because they, they envision the natural resource inventory being an ongoing, um, ha having a cycle to it where they're routinely going through and updating the inventory. And as inventory updates, the mapping that comes out of it, whether it's a conservation map or a development constraints map would um, have this rolling update as well. So that's why we kind of boxed them as, as programs rather than say a one-time conservation map. 
and a one-time development constraints map. Um, that's why they're really classified as programs, but it could obviously go either way, but that's, that's why it is classified the way it is. And then I think a lot of the other ones are, are uh, kind of make sense. The carbon sequestration one that you pointed out was specifically targeted by um, Alec, the, the parks um, director. He, he, want, he felt that it, we've, we have the parks and we have the um, land in Berlin, a lot of land in Berlin that we have uh, forest management. And so um, he felt that with the, ed, with the energy plan that we could get some credit for our forest management, especially if we adopt the forest management strategy that increases the amount of carbon being sequestered in those parks, that we could then help out our energy plan goals. Um, I don't know what that is, but I do think it would probably take a study, which would take a little bit more money, um, you know, high, medium, low, low cost projects, and they go up to $1,000. So it certainly wouldn't be that, which is why it's a medium resource. And it's, I have it as a medium priority. It obviously could be adjusted. Um, we, we have a lot of high and a lot of medium priorities and probably could benefit by having some of these. Just because it's low priority on the plan doesn't mean it's not important. Um, it just means that as we prioritize what's the most important thing to get done first, it may be something that gets bumped down. But again, as you as you point out, Aaron, it may be something we wait here from the public on and decide whether it needs some adjusting at that time. But that's the history of that one. No, that's, that's a helpful explanation. Um, it was just unclear to me, given what was on paper, what the sort of scope of the plan was. I, but that seems uh, a lot more tailored to what the Parks Commission is sort of geared towards as opposed to a, a broader sort of citywide you know, sequestration and management plan, which I don't know what the overall scope would be, so. I wonder if there would be, if it's more of like, if we aren't sure what the forest management practices would be to maximize carbon sequestration, it might be good to like figure out what that would be first and then decide if that's what we wanna do, depending on other priority uses for the forested areas, given that at least some in the city have trails and stuff. I mean, I guess I'll just say that, you know, Alex is way smarter about this stuff than, than I certainly am. So I, I'll defer to his, <laughs> his judgment and, and what he thinks is possible. So. Maybe we should just call it a program instead of a plan. <laughs> sort of knocks it into a more manageable sort of feeling. Yeah, I guess I just, I don't know enough about what would come out of that. It feels like we're already, my assumption is that what would come out of that plan in terms of strategies would be already things we were doing. I don't know what else we could do that we're not already thinking about. I guess that's the point of assessing it, but I, I'm not sure what those things would be, like conserve more land or other things that we're already doing. Yeah, I think it's supposed to come down to how we how we manage the plan, uh, how we manage our forest land. I think there, um, it's not simply a matter of not cutting down the trees, but if you manage the trees and manage the forest in a certain way, then you you can end up with more. Um, carbon being stored. Okay. Yeah, I think Thanks. I'm not completely familiar with how it works either. So yeah, it, maybe we may just want more information on like maybe if we we could probably wait on this, but if we wanted to decide if we wanted to change its priority level, it might be good to understand what the current priorities for those forested areas are and then how compatible that would be for the forest or for carbon sequestration. I don't think it's bad like in and of itself would be interesting data that no. Um, I just don't know if we're like prepared to change our priorities because I don't know what those priorities are. <laughs>
my, my thinking at this point is, is like, let's put it out for public comment. See if yeah. we, back. we can circle back around with Alec, get a better handle on what the thought process is on it. And we can make whatever adjustments we need to based on that and any yeah. public input. I think that makes sense. Okay, are we, are we feeling good about you know, this? <laughs> I don't know if we've been, how consistent we've been, but in some cases we've been, a, I think we've been approving these just to, not necessarily to approve them that they won't be changed in the future, but just that they're done. I don't know. We wanna do that or just agree that it's done and I can go through and move it on. Anybody, does anybody feel inclined to make a motion or just say nope? Okay. <laughs> this... Oh, sure. I'll move. Are we moving approval of just the goals and strategies or? Uh, it's whatever you want. I mean, I think that the, the thinking right now, I mean, the, the, the aspirations and goals we've sort of settled on, we're looking just specifically at the strategies piece right now. And I think it's just we're deciding on sort of moving it along, um, you know, sort of handing it off to Mike you know, to kind of get the ball rolling, get it in the public domain for comments and whatnot. So. Yeah, I'm fine moving approval of the strategies to take it to the next step. Okay, before we before we do that, I just want to give everyone a, a last chance if there are any other strategies that they wanted to, to point out or to discuss more. Okay, so everybody's super comfortable. Okay, so we have a motion from Ariane to approve the, uh, the goals, aspirations, and strategies. Uh, do we have a second? A second. Second. Um, I think I think Aaron. I think I had one one change on the goals. If you can click over to the goals tab, I don't think anyone will have an issue with this. I I struck what used to be number three. Um, we had approved it before, but when I went through and did all of the strategies, there really weren't strategies supporting this goal. And I think it's something that we do anyways. I don't think we need to have a goal that states we're going to maintain strong relationships with our with groups and organizations. So I think we can remove that as a goal because it didn't have strategies just so people don't think I'm doing things without kind of letting you guys know that you guys had talked about approving that goal. Um, but it'll, it'll, it'll go away. I think they'll still do it, but it just won't be in the plan. Yeah, they, I forgot we had discussed this a little bit at the last meeting, but that's the one where we didn't have a quorum. So. Okay. Thanks, Mike. Um, okay, so we can proceed. Uh, all in favor of approving the goals, aspirations, goals, and strategies uh, as they are now? Say aye. 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 You opposed? Okay. So that, that lets us move on to the chapter and. Uh, Aaron, take it back. So this was the document that I shared last week i think we had discussed the, the working group had thought that maybe a, a more efficient way to go about or just an efficient way to go about doing this would be to just put it out there give everybody a week to review this is just a reworking of the chapter text mike had done a first draft i think it was structured pretty well uh, Marcel and I had just gone in and made some uh, sort of line level changes across the board. Um, the initial first draft is still in the uh, 
is in the drive as a separate document. I think there's ways that you can look and see what the changes are. I can't remember how to do that in Google Docs, but long story short, um, haven't received any comments or any suggested edits on this document. So I'm gonna assume that we're generally okay with it, but obviously if anybody wants to talk about it, um, please do. Uh, I think Mike did a really good job of structuring the chapter text and sort of getting the big stick issues out on paper. Um, so there wasn't a whole, you know, there wasn't a lot structurally that I felt like we needed to do, which was good. So, um, yeah, but we have. Um, so I didn't, I didn't leave any comments or making any changes when I went through it. I was just like, like skimming over it just, um, just for the purposes of the discussion. I think there are some like little like um, typo things throughout. Just to, that I, I didn't I didn't fix them as I went. I, I guess I was thinking that other people were going to be in there. Um, just wanted to flag that for whoever. Yeah, like you know, like with a lot of working documents, it became sort of a bloodbath with red line changes. Um, so sometimes those those little typos work their way in there and I just we, nobody sort of worked those out and obviously you can go in there and shore that stuff up I just wanted to sort of um, you know, if there are sort of larger structural or sort of you know, conceptual issues that we wanted to talk about then we can do that. Okay. Um. I guess I can mention my one comment in there, although I think um, it, there's probably not a whole lot to do about it now. I was just thinking that we have the map section in each of these chapters below, maps and tables. Um, and I didn't, I, I just didn't want it to be repetitive for the sake of brevity because we're trying to keep these brief. So I was just thinking if we did have the map section at the bottom, which I think we or sorry, midway, which I think we will. If we wanted to put a couple of examples up towards the introductory part, I think that would be fine. I think we should just keep them like super brief, like kind of images and captions underneath um, rather than in paragraph form. Yeah, that sounds great to me. Agreed. Yeah, I think I was hoping when we do the the website version that that those maps that are in that third section actually kind of get inserted into the document in certain relevant places we wouldn't repeat them um okay i don't entirely think in some cases maybe we have to have a separate section for just some maps if we've just got them but i'm hoping that they'll be more integrated into that into that page yeah i think that's a that's a great idea i like i think it would like if they were kind of integrated into the near the appropriate paragraph, it would help just visually look nice and give, you know, nice examples, um, break up the text. So I think that's great. Oh, and there is one thing we did not fix. I'm seeing right now. It's right there where I've highlighted. Um, I can try to figure out which is more appropriate. Um, it may be that both are appropriate and we'll just have to pick one, but um, I can try to ask. Okay, I guess we're ready to pass this one along too. Um, Mike, Mike, how are you feeling about it? Um, I mean, I've always been good with you guys going your your edits that you guys have going through them. So I didn't see anything that was really major changes, anyways, when I read through it. I actually, I think, yeah. I actually put the other one 
kind of side by side to go and see most of the edits were relatively um, minor. I don't think substantively we did a whole lot. It was yeah. mo mostly just kind of wording and stylistic stuff. Mm -hmm. So yeah, thanks again, Mike, for a good solid first draft. Very helpful to have your perspective on what is important to capture. So, so you, so you're good, Mike. You don't need any, anything more. No, like, uh, and I think, like I said, I think as we get going, um, you know, we're going to have other times we can get in here if we, once we've put all this together, we're going to all have another time to go through it and start to see where things don't line up. But so far, I've been pretty happy with, you know, we've been able to meet our target lengths for the most part, you know, trying to keep it relatively short, trying to keep it targeted. So um, I think we're doing, I don't know, I think I've been happy with, with the way the chapters have gone so far. Um, with the first drafts and then the edits, I think it comes out really, um, comes out well. Okay. Uh, do we have any more Planning Commission things to discuss about it? Okay. Well, one thing yeah, I'm just listen. thinking, sorry, thinking out loud, not to belabor this, but I was just making sure. So we pulled out the goal about maintaining relationships, but I don't believe anything that specific is written in here. So I think that still works. And then the implementation, I don't think we get as specific as like the forestry plan either. So if that were to change later, I think there would have to be a significant change to the goals and the implementation strategies in like once we get public input for us to have to come back and change this section. But good to just keep in mind if we do get that. Yep. Yeah, that's, that's a good thing to think about. Yeah, I should a quick search, search for anything involving sequestration. Looks like it's not mentioned. Yeah, I don't think so. And we talk a lot about volunteers, which like implies a, a relationship building, but um, I think we're okay. Well, it's all, I mean, it's all broad brushstroke stuff. Yeah. Everything. But it's, it's all, can, it's, it's couched well in, you know, the underlying goals and strategies. Yeah. I yeah, I didn't, I didn't try and I haven't in any of them tried to have a recitation of every strategy I tried to hit these, these are the biggest, most important ones and they're going to be some other ones, you know, even like in historic resources, there may be a study of something that is a lower priority that doesn't get mentioned and I think that's fine. In my view, I, th I thought that was fine just to give people the highlights of the most important strategies that we're working on. Great. I, uh, by the way, thanks the thanks to the working group for um, all the work you put in on this. Uh, okay. Do we have a motion to approve the chapter as it is? I'll move to approve the chapter. Uh, by Ariane. Um, I I can second. <laughs> Second by Marcella. Those in favor of approving the chapter, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Chapter approved. Need to through that. So it looks like we have quite a bit of time left, uh, but um, only have one thing more on the agenda. I think I'll I'll briefly just to be able this time anyway. Um, I I skimmed over the comments from the chair part, but there is one thing I should make everyone aware of, and that's uh, that I'm I'm meeting with this staff person from um, CJAC uh, probably tomorrow. Uh, CJAC is the um, let me read it just so that community I justice. Her. The yeah, social and economic justice advisory committee. 
they they had a, a report um, from a consultant. Uh, they were they're working with a consultant to do a report, and they they've got that back. And I, I guess some of their the feedback from the consultant is that there's big shocker. There's social and economic justice issues maybe surrounding housing. Uh, so they want to to talk about where, what the housing plan looks like a little bit. Uh, and so so I'm going to have kind of a preliminary meeting. We haven't gone over housing yet. Um, and, you know, so so it might be a little bit premature, but but I'll try to, to uh, let Shana, who's the staff member, know about how I think it's going to go and then Maybe I'll circle back to to see Jack once we've done more with the housing. But it, some of this discussion or some of the stuff from that report might inform, you know, when we when we get to working on the housing chapter soon. I think that'll probably be our next chapter. Yeah. Yeah. So housing's coming up. See Jackson going to be updated. Uh, that's it though. So the next thing on the, go ahead, Arya. Well, I was just going to ask, um, I feel a little bit lost in terms of, can we just review what need, what needs to still, what chapters we still need to review and then what the process is after that a little, that would be helpful for me. Yeah, good question. Um, if, unless Mike has it off the top of his head, I can pull up the Google Drive. Uh, what we have on the Google Drive, and Mike, feel free to interrupt me if, if you got better. Uh, we we have arts and culture chapter, which we have not worked on, which was kind of optional. It's not a statutory mandated one, and it's not one that's been done before, but we had had discussions about the need for that. There's a community services chapter, which is a similar thing. I don't think that's statutory, but but I think we do have some materials for that. Yeah, the, it, community services would be a requirement. Um, okay, and that's it's got a lot of moving parts and I'm still working on it. So we did parks or we did some preliminary look at the parks plan, but we also need to do recreation cemetery. Senior Center. And there's one more. So the our Community Services Department has, I think, four. Five pieces to it so. Okay. So that, that's that's good to know. So that's it's not as small as I first imagined. It's um, a little bit of a big area. So so those two to do. Uh, we've not done economic development. That's a big one coming up. Uh, we've done energy. We have not done governance, but that a lot of that's going to be city council, I believe. We've done that's, historic. That's resources. not required. Okay. But that's we good. may do it, but it's not required. Yeah, and I mean, I'm of the attitude like the more the better. I mean, sorry, Mike. Like, which which one's not required? Governance uh, is not a requirement. Uh, so yeah, I mean, my attitude is, it's nice to have these extra ones in there because it's it's guidance for city council, right? So um, having having some documents, have some planning in place for some of these other areas, um, is better than not having it. Uh, Historic resources we've done, housing we're doing next. There's the implementation plan. That was actually the first one that we did. That was the little bit of that white paper on butterflies, rainbows, and unicorns. And you know, we're gonna organize our plan. Um, so that's kind of actually it's kind of the kickoff of all of the other implementation plans. Um, land use, which is going to be big for us. Uh, natural resources is done. Public safety, uh, we have not done. Um, knock on wood, but I don't, I, oh, anyway, whatever. It's one we have to do. Six, uh, that's, that's six chapters. Um, transportation we've done and utilities we've not done. So there's so there's seven chapters that we have on the Google Drive 
to do. And we have done one, two, uh, three if you count implementation plan, four, five of them so far. So not quite halfway. And some of the chapters that we still have to do are things where we're um, not able to lean on an existing city committee as much. Like arts and culture and land use in particular are going to be more work for us. Um, so we won't we won't have the there's some people on arts right and then we can get montpelier alive to help us with culture and uh we obviously there's more than just montpelier alive but the what we have for arts and culture is we have a uh a pub we have a public art commission yeah they have a plan. I've, I've i've talked to them a couple of times but as far as i know they don't have anything like directly to beat us uh but they definitely we definitely have them as as a resource for input I actually threw together, it's probably, I don't know if it's been a year, but it probably was about a year. I, I threw together kind of an outline um, where I, I went and spoke with some local artists and things to get an idea of what some of the public perceived need is. So we have we have that outline, We ha and I've had discussions with the public arts um, chair at, during, at that time as well. Uh, we have that. Um, but yeah, there's still there's still more. I haven't I haven't been in touch with Montpelier Live about it. Uh, so does that answer your question? Looks like we've got about seven more to go, five down. Yeah, that's helpful. And then and then once we've approved all these, we will put it out on the website for public comment. Is that our plan? Yeah, the plan is we'll start developing the, the web pages. Um, I haven't figured out exactly how that's going to work. We kind of lost a lot of our funding with the way the 2020 kind of went through. Um, but we still are, I'm still hopeful we'll be able to get somebody to help us kind of put these things into the separate web pages and start to build this out. So that way we can start to get public comment on There'll be the, the chapter, which will kind of get inserted as a page with an attachment to the, you know, to the more of the Excel, the Excel table would be something people could go kind of click on to get, get down to that level. Okay. Yeah, that's helpful. Thank you. That answered my question. Just yeah. helpful to have a reminder of where we are for me. <laughs> yeah, and a, a number of these, I have like both the housing pieces I think are in there. So the number of chapters that are ready for review, I was working today on economic development um, and I've been trying to work on some of the community services um, to start to get those wrapped up. Uh, public safety, they, they ha they've had a public safety committee for the past year. Their report just came out last week so I really haven't been trying to get to kind of get in the way of what they're working on right now. Um, and with a new police chief, I just was kind of giving a little bit of room for them to kind of get what they're doing, get caught up. I think they had to hire about four or five different police officers at the same time. So they've been pretty busy um, just getting their own stuff done. But I think, I think once I get to sit down with them, it won't take long to develop their plan. Um, because they already have so much background information. It's not like I've got to find out from them what their mission is. They've, they're an organization that is very mission driven. So I don't think it's going to be hard to, to develop. Uh, I think it's just a matter of getting all the pieces because we've got a police, we've got fire, we've got the emergency um, dispatch, and we have community justice. So we kind of have these four different entities that kind of have to get fit into that chapter. Um, There's also the uh, the new oversight board, right? Yeah, I don't know if is that, is that a permanent board or was that an ad hoc one time board to do this plan? And I should probably know that answer, but I don't. I don't know. Um, I talked to the mayor at some point about it, but she didn't. I don't think she specified. Um, 
but but I, I was just I, I was just saying that there may be a stakeholder that we could use mm -hmm. as well. Uh, yeah, yeah, there's a so couple of them, like, and so I've been working on them in in there. So if people pick through and open them, you might see some some pieces of things that are in draft form. Because um, I've been working on utilities and facilities is actually pretty close to being done as well. So I, we we have a working group for economic development, and we and I'm on it. We have we have not met actually. So um, I'll try to schedule something uh, with that group but it's good to know we have other a few other uh, you know things to look at before we get to that yeah when you do that try to invite me in because I think there's a lot to the economic development that needs to get adjusted the original one was done by MDC the Montpelier Development Corp and they are no longer in existence so we I've, I've been kind of going through that's why I've been going through to try to do another revision of the existing draft because I don't think it's relevant anymore um so okay i'll try to set up a meeting with that group like in october i don't think we'll need it before that because we that's only going to be two or three planning commission meetings away we'll have yeah, other hopefully i'll have a draft by then for you something to for you guys to chew on does anyone here like remember if you're on that I want to say either John or Aaron's on it, but maybe Barb was the other person. Oh, I, maybe I should have led with this. <laughs> yeah, Mike knows. I guess I guess I didn't prepare my comments very well because I guess there were some things, and now stream of consciousness. Barb's planning to leave uh, the planning commission. Um, so. I think re positive. reappointments reappointments come in October, and I think she's just not going to be asked to be reappointed. So there's going to be an open seat, and some of you may have also gotten notices from Mary Smith that may have said you're due to get reappointed. So if we didn't get those, are we not due to get reappointed? <laughs> okay, I'll double yeah. check well, I'll to make sure. Like the opposite, like half of us are this year, every other year, right? Yeah, no, I think okay. you, you and I are both in the clear this year. So. Okay, great. <laughs> I, I think maybe Ariana is too, I think, if I remember correctly. I don't remember. That was like a long time ago when we talked about that. Last fall or something. Yeah. I'm sorry to interrupt. No, 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 I, I, this I is never guys is I never important info. Info. So I'm just going to keep showing up until somebody tells me I'm pissed off. <laughs> right. If I, if you have I show to show up until you find a replacement. That I wasn't, <laughs> that I wasn't reappointed. Somebody let me know. I, I, I didn't receive a letter or anything, but I actually don't know. Planning commission time passes really weirdly anyway. I think I've been here for like <laughs> ever and it feels like I've not been here long, but. Can you pull that for us somewhere, Mike? Does that live somewhere? The whose terms are up when? Yeah. I thought it was on the website. Used oh, to yeah. Be. yeah, I think I it is. That. I'll see if I can find it really fast. No, it doesn't have the dates. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, and I love it that we don't even know if we were even on the planning commission. <laughs> we're all still here. <laughs> and we, just, like, we have no idea. We're like, I don't know. Maybe I'm not even on. The no, no, no. Maybe they replaced me. I don't know. No one else showed up. <laughs> We're like robots that keep doing our task because no one told us that it was pointless to stop. Yeah. Uh, maybe we should find out about that. Maybe does, does, well, yeah, okay. Will you find out about that for us, Mike? <laughs> yeah, I was just trying to do a little bit of. Doesn't look like it's publicly available, but whoever sent the letter to Barb will know. How does um, finding new people kind of go about happening? Do we do we just post it? When when will we have it? When can we can we reach out to people? I think Mary will be doing the posting for it, and. Um, if you have people who are interested, you should have them let 
Mary know, or, or let me know, and I can forward it up to Mary, um, so we can make sure that they get on the list of get. Because I think there's a, a an application you're supposed to fill out, a little thing of who you are and why you're interested in participating or volunteering. Yeah, there is. Okay, and so that should that should happen now. Uh, yeah, because I think the appointment is coming up in October. So, okay, here we go. Planning Commission expires in 21 is John Adams, Aaron, and Ariane. It looks like Barb was actually good for another year, so she'll be, and it expires in September, so I was wrong. So it actually is coming up very, very soon. Wait, what? <laughs> I'm well. I'm looking at who's in the um, annual report. So it looks like it's supposed to be John, Aaron, and Ariane, and not Barb. But it sounds like Barb is going to be resigning anyways. Did Barb get a letter? I don't know. It sounded like it. And I'm I, pretty yeah. sure I got. I'm pretty sure I was contacted last fall to be reappointed for two more years. And I Is did the application. Maybe somewhere. the maybe the dates are wrong. I'll double check the dates. I think I think what happens is is the um, the reappointment like applications are due in the fall, but the actual reappointment doesn't happen until like January. Or something like that. I, I, yeah, I think well, I think they had they had readjusted it with a charter change. Oh. We had some charter issues a few oh. years. Nice knowing you all. I guess I'm not going to be around. <laughs> so, I didn't get a letter. Yeah, I will definitely follow up with um, Mary to find out what the story is with everybody's reappointments. Maybe her official list is different than what's in the annual report. Okay, and I just looked up what Barb said. I don't think that she received an individual notification. I think she just she saw that it's that the um, there had already been posted something from the city about looking for planning commission people interested in planning commission i guess in anticipation of these other seats in case maybe someone didn't um decide to just try to stay or if the city council hates somebody um, i guess i shouldn't be flipping about that uh <laughs> But uh, so uh, I think that's what Barb saw. I, so I, I don't think that her term is supposed to be up, but maybe she's planning to resign anyway. Uh, is there a city council like a, um, agenda coming up that's going to have planning commission appointments at it? That was a little bit of what I was looking to see. It doesn't look like there's a meeting coming up this week. So that probably means their next meeting's not till next week. So the agenda won't be out till the end of this week. But I will let everyone know if there's if it's on the agenda, I can let them know to, to hold off or to make sure that all of you guys have a chance to apply. I thought they were gonna send out a information to everybody who's already on the boards, but um, I think one of the differences is, um, you know, I think three years ago we had Jamie and then two years ago we had Jasmine and then this year we have Mary and I think that the fact that we've gone through a few administrative people we've lost a couple of our our processes that we usually got used to simply because people aren't familiar with all of the things that we used to do so I may just have to follow up to make sure that she's notifying everybody. Okay, yeah, thanks. You no, know, we will at least have one open seat. So if you do know anybody who is interested or might be interested, um, certainly let them know. We got to make sure we let John know. Yeah, I'll let I'll let all of you know what the status is of everybody. So you'll know if you're good or not for this year. And I, I would think it would be a good if you do 
if your seat's up and you're reapplying, it probably would also be good to go to that city council meeting, at least for the appointment part. Yeah, and they do have, um, they do go hybrid. So if you are in a position where you would like to just go through and make sure you um, meet with them and talk to them, uh, you can always let them know you're going to be on the Zoom and they can um, get you in that way. Even though it's a live meeting, you can still Zoom in from home if, it, if you have child care or other things that make that difficult to do. Okay, thanks everybody for the good questions and discussion. Feels like I was, we stumbled upon some important stuff there. Uh, okay, so I'm going to move along with the agenda. So we, we need to just dis discuss a way to um, review some proposed changes to the um, zoning bylaws uh, that, are, that came from the public. You know, we get these time from, from time to time and, uh, you know, we don't want it to distract from the city plan work because we're making pretty good progress with that but like but we, we can't afford to to lose too much time so mike had mentioned us doing a working group type approach uh and then in in hopes of it shortening the amount of time that we use a planning commission meeting to discuss it i thought that maybe more people than just a subgroup would want to be involved. So I was thinking we could just schedule a different planning commission meeting on a different day that's posted, handle it completely at that meeting. Uh, that way we won't have to kick it. Like if it were a working group, we'd have to kick it over to a regular meeting. But if we just had a meeting, uh, we wouldn't have to do that. And um, obviously we just need just a quorum. So it's not like, if there's a problem with someone not be able to go or if they're not interested or whatever, then um, it's not going to kill it. So those are those are the two kind of ideas floating around. Um, I, I, I think it's tidy to just get it out of the way and having a side meeting. But um, what do you guys think? Yeah, I'm, I'm OK with that. With what? Oh, <laughs> with uh, having, a, I, I, I agree with you. It's sort of like a special, or from what I understand, like a special planning commission, not on a Monday night, so we don't interrupt the forward flow in the city plan, but we review zoning changes. And as long as we have a quorum, like, you know, if somebody isn't interested, they don't have to come, but probably most of us are interested in reviewing zoning ordinance changes. Uh, I I like the uh, the subcommittee approach that like put out there just because I think it makes a, a couple of things is one if you're gonna have it's gonna wind up having some people have to be in a side meeting anyway those that are really invested and interested in those zoning issues can be a part of that subgroup you can really do a deep dive with fewer cooks in the kitchen I think have a more focused sort of look at those zoning changes and then make a recommendation to the larger group and be able to sort of give a presentation as to what the working group's recommendation is and the rest of us you know that are just sort of a part of the larger group and the regular meeting can ask any follow-up questions and we can have that discussion but I think I think it usually helps to have a subcommittee of folks that have taken a really close look at these things and have sort of looked at it from a variety of angles and then bring it to the commission um, it, as opposed to having everybody just have a side meeting and everybody's sort of getting up to speed on the zoning change um, all together. I just feel like in those instances, we spend a lot of time just sort of sifting through and trying to figure out what exactly it is. Um, whereas I think if we have a subcommittee, I mean, obviously those folks are going to have that get up to speed on it as well. But when we have the larger vote uh, amongst the group, you've got a really sort of well 
focused and well understood group of you know a group of people that really have a, a firm understanding of what the what the changes and have recommendations. So I just think that's a little more efficient. But I, I don't I'm not opposed to the other idea either. I mean I think that has merit too. I just think the working group approach um, is it sort of helps protect the people that are that are that want to do that work can certainly join the subcommittee. Those that are not are less interested don't have to be part of that uh, sort of special meeting. Yeah, one concern I have about doing like doing working groups on things like this is that it's just it seems actually overall inefficient. Like in theory, it sounds like maybe there's some like advantages to it, but what you end up doing in reality is just having the same discussion twice. Um, and just having, I don't think it's too, we don't have that big of a group where I don't, I don't feel like it's uh, too many cooks in the kitchen to have like a, to have six people instead of four people in the discussion, it, it, especially for avoiding having the discussion twice. I think today's experience with the way we had the working group do the work, make a presentation to the group today, and it lasted 20 minutes, would sort of show that it's not an inefficient approach. But well, I, that's, I, mean, I, I get what you're saying. I actually, but I actually don't think that the approach is that efficient that we took today. I think that a lot of there was a lot of people time spent on it, more more than normal. Um, I, so I, I wonder. On how you look at it. If it would be helpful to see specifically what we're looking at first, um, so we know, I, is it? Do we have like the Excel file spreadsheet where we're going through, like we've done in the past, of different specific areas that have come up within Mike's shop? Like, what are where are we at with these changes right now? Uh, right now, they're being reviewed by um, by Meredith. I I collected them all together. We've got some final proofing to do, but there are a series or a set of uh, small map changes or larger map changes, but depending on how you're looking at it. Um, so that's that's one group are kind of the map change groups. There are um, a set of new regulations. So we've got some new planned unit development rules um, that are general. As you know, we've got a whole bunch of these very specific um, new neighborhood. Um, and what we have is some requests that people just go through and say, well, we, we just need some basic, um, either what we call um, condominium type PUDs or just a general PUD. So we drafted some PUD language that's just general. There are no density bonuses. Just if you want to cluster some lots, you've got the ability to do it. Um, without having to do the really detailed ones, which give density bonuses and other benefits. So we've got some language there that has to be reviewed. And then we've got a lot of these little technical ones that have come up where for administrative reasons, you know, how we, how we define um, accessory structures. So generally, if something is a part of the structure, you know, it's not accessory. Um, so you've got a porch. A porch is part of the structure. But if you look in one part, decks, even though they're attached to the structure, are considered accessory structures. So they can meet the accessory structure setback, even though they're attached to the. So we kind of had some these definition things where it's like, well, technically, if it's just the deck, then it's a, it's accessory. If you put the roof over it, then it becomes part of the structure. Um, and we just had to make sure that we were consistent on on how we defined it, because in one part we talk about accessory structures, in another part we talk about principal structures, and that starts to become really important when we start getting into things like somebody wanting to put an accessory apartment in a garage, and then you're like, okay, now we're starting to get to a little bit more gray area because now. You know, we, we really have to start talking about whether that garage becomes a primary structure because it's got primary uses and those types of pieces. Um, so we just had to go through those those are little technical things that will need. That's one of the few um, places that need to get cleaned up. Um, front yard setbacks or front yard fences are another one that have had some issues. Um, so we just have a few little corrections. I think those are pretty easy. We can get through those pretty quick. I think the 
the longer ones are really just an explanation of why. Um, and then there's one policy one that's in there and it comes down to setbacks um, over in um, the farm and factory, which is over by um, past the roundabout as you're heading out a route to an East Montpelier road there that um, there's a whole set of buildings over in there that are where Cabot and all these industrial buildings are and they're all zero line setback to the old rail line that was there. And the setback in that district's actually like 20 feet. And they're like, well, everybody's zero line and yet it's gonna be 20 feet, can we be zero was the question from the property owner and, and we can talk about that. And I don't think I would recommend zero, I think I'd recommend five feet, but um, I think there's some changes we could make to the setbacks in that area. Um, so we had a couple of those little little ones along those lines. So, um, but most of these, again, as I said, they tie back to people who've made specific requests about projects. Um, and uh, so we've got a couple of them that are that are pending. But I don't think it would take more than one meeting. It, this is not. As Stephanie, you probably, you know, and you guys remember going through some of these, or the, the first set of lit fixes that we went through probably had 100 fixes. And then the next set kind of went through and had 50 or 60. And then, you know, now we're down to these much smaller lists of, of things that um, I didn't, I haven't put it into an Excel table because it just fit onto a memo um, outlining 10, I think it was 10 changes that we had identified. So I mentioned this before, Mike, but I, I think I am in, interested in for the for the density related things to for us to, to maybe take a look at um, doing something even broader to to address the density requests that we're getting now, but to also look at something broader than that to reassess how we how we use density. Um, it's, and it's because in my time here, I've seen people get worked up over density because they think that it's a proxy for like the character of their neighborhood, but that's not what it is. And so people don't understand it very well. And then we're always having to adjust it because it is stopping like certain development from taking place that we that's that's desirable otherwise. So um, I would be interested in maybe taking a, a broader look when it comes to those those parts. Um, and it sounds like, yeah, this list of 10, it sounds like, yeah, we could definitely fill up a meeting with those things. Can I just, one, one thing about the discussion about the, ta the type of meeting that we would wanna have for this, um, just thinking out loud a little bit in terms of co like comparing and contrasting the way that we did today's meeting with the subcommittee and the presentation and um, talking about targeted things versus the way we approached like maybe transportation or energy where we kind of went through the whole chapter together. I'm feeling like there may be a nice way to kind of take the best of both of those two things because for me it was like I understand what you're saying about like okay we all get together for two hours and we spent we all spend two hours or we all get together for two hours and like a few other folks do extra hours of work prior. So like in the end, that might be more hours, but I, I am finding that if the meeting structure that we set up sort of incentivizes no prior work on anyone's behalf and we walk through everything together, um, I personally have a much harder time keeping focused and fully understanding what's going on. And so I'm feeling like sort of really strongly encouraged or mandatory pre-work that's sort of well-defined would be really helpful and would help us not, not go through the line by line silly stuff in the meeting. It would keep us much more targeted and engaged in the meeting. It would require more hours, I think, but I think the quality would be better, especially in the meeting. Um, because I have a, 
I feel like a couple of those meetings before when we were just going through, I was just really struggling because I think we all were struggling. <laughs> I'm just going to say we were probably all struggling. So um, I feel like there might be a way we can thread this to make it work. I agree that this could probably be handled in a meeting, but I would want everybody and myself included to come with targeted ways to discuss rather than just be like, okay, Mike, take it away from the top and explain all of this. Cause I'm not going to be able to do that in one meeting, not for something as even if this is small, small potatoes in zoning world, I'm not going to be able to do that on my own in the meeting. So, yeah, I mean, yeah, I'd like to talk about this too, but I, I'm, hopefully I don't sound like defensive or touchy or anything, but I, I like the walkthrough approach. For one thing, it's tried and true, like legislatures use this. Um, there is an assumption that people are going to prepare ahead of time. And so the walkthrough doesn't exist just to catch everyone up to where they should be. So like, I've never had that assumption or walking through for that reason. But the, the walkthrough does like, it does take some time, but it, but it makes people um, consider everything as they go. If you've done research ahead of time and you have your points, like tonight we just said, do you, do you have some points you wanna bring up? And I don't think that that's as conducive for discussion. And I don't think it's as high a quality, I'll be honest. If, if people didn't do work ahead of time, then they had nothing to say tonight and they didn't read it. And it's definitely lower quality. With the walkthrough, at least people have the opportunity to um, stop and, and it, because things are drawn out as you go. I don't think it takes that much time. And I think it is more thorough. I also think it's more efficient because you're not, you're having individuals work it, on things in the background, but but you're not having extra meetings with the subgroup. On the, I mean, the subgroup stuff we've done is fine, but but um, the reason why the things work tonight is because we've you guys had several meetings to like to put it in into um, shape. But uh, what I've been doing with the walkthroughs is I've been going through myself and and rewriting the chapters and getting them up to shape also. Um, so I'm not seeing a huge difference other than we just have people have fewer opportunities to like really stop at every point and, and uh, to, to concentrate on, on things. As far as some of our conversations that get hung up, I don't see that as relating to the approach we've taken. I see that as relating to any individual on the planning commission can choose to be pedantic and, and tie things up if they want to. And if you're walking through it, maybe you're giving them opportunities to do that. But I mean, I don't know. I think some, some preparation ahead of time and some self-restraint are actually like the things we're getting at, right? Um, yeah, it might be. I just, I think there, we maybe could be, I think we're probably saying the same thing. I think there maybe could be a little bit more of a, um, emphasis put on what it, you know, what is effective prior work for each meeting? Um, you know, what, what is ineffective walkthrough, like walking through the chapters and doing typos? I mean, that's painful. That's not helpful. Yeah, that's and why we, I started. Yeah, that's why I started like just doing it and um, so that we're not doing that space. well yeah which I mean but still that puts a lot of extra work on you particularly and then you know I can't read your edits in the middle of a meeting while we're going through it you know it's it's I don't know I feel like there's there's some like we can thread it I think we can thread it I get I get what you're saying about the benefits of of having a robust discussion and maybe there <clears throat> maybe we were particularly light tonight and there's a way to beef it up a little bit um, based on what we did tonight, but not go quite so deep um, as some of the previous meetings. I, I, I think, um, has there been any problematic meetings since I've started um, doing the edits beforehand? Can you remind me which one, which ones those were? The last two or three I did. And the, before that we were, um, kind of like not as structured about it. I mean, we, we were still like doing some wordsmithing ahead of time, but, it, but not as, um, not to the same extent. Cause I, I don't, I think our, our chapter walkthroughs since I started writing them, I, we actually haven't had that many comments. 
and I understand that it's hard for people to read it. That's why that's one reason why I do read it out loud so that people know what uh, what all of that track changes stuff is saying. Yeah, it's better. I still think reading. I am on the side of reading the chapter in the meeting is not not helpful. I think helpful for strategies, helpful for goals, potentially helpful for some of the zoning stuff. I'm not really sure. I haven't done a whole lot of that with this group myself, um, just because we haven't had too much of it. But um, I don't know. The chapter itself, I don't find. I don't find that to be. It was better after you know when we did the pre-editing, but um, still pretty painful. Yeah, I mean, it, it's it's not something that occurred to me as like something that's like a bad thing because I mean, in in the legislature, they they read the bill line by line to the committee. It's not to say that the committee can't read. It's just you know what's done. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I think I think for purpose, I think for purposes of this discussion, it seems to me that there's like a basic threshold question that needs to be answered before you even get in and stuff, which is like, if everybody here is interested in having a meeting to go through these zoning changes, we can we can adopt a broader like let's have a separate meeting approach. But if not everybody wants to do that, and there's only certain people that are interested in it, I think a subcommittee approach lends itself a little bit better to the process. So. Does everybody on this call want to have another meeting just to deal with the zoning piece and then have a sort of meeting or do some of us not want yeah, to do that? Okay. And well, yeah, Aaron, Aaron, well, well, the conversation we were having though was like a, it was more, it was more broad for like purposes of future meetings to see if like people are kind of happy with the way we're doing the city plan and like walking through it. So we are kind of having two conversations at once, but again, it was worth it, but um, it, that it, that conversation is worth having, so like, I don't want to just like drop it and and interrupt it. Okay, but um, the, the agenda item is whether or not we have a subcommittee approach or something else with respect to the zoning issues. Yeah, right? and I probably broadened that, so forgive me for that. I and on the zoning issue, I think that is sufficiently technical in in terms in my world <laughs> that I would appreciate having sort of some targeted pre work whether it's on a subcommittee or not. And then, um, but I know I'll benefit from hearing a, like fairly detailed stuff from Mike at that meeting. Um, I suppose in my experience so far, the chapters for the plan and something mm -hmm. like zoning are kind of different for me. Yeah, that's, I, that's good I, to hear this. Stuff. I agree with that completely. Yes, I think that's also the approach that I would want. Cool. So yeah, it could be it could be subcommittee depending on how many of us care to do that part. I just um... wait, Stephanie. Can you can you tell me the part that you're yeah. agreeing with? Yeah, that I, I think for the purposes of zoning and those changes, it makes more sense to have that more detailed overview. And I, it's also hard for me to read the chapters line by line in and in, in the full group. It's just hard for me to follow that. Um, it's not the way that I think and learn. So I. It's it's nice to have someone who is reviewing in a little bit more detail. We could we should all be looking at it still and then providing those comments. But but I think yeah I agree for the purposes of the zoning. That that's a little more particular. And there might be some things where Mike will say, well this isn't really substantive. It's it's pretty minor and maybe we don't have to dig into those as much. But for the bigger things, I think it's helpful to have a, a broader conversation with everybody at a more detailed level. Um, maybe I'm, maybe I'm not following very well, some, uh, but, uh, I'm, I'm hearing you say that, that not, not a huge fan of walking through the chapters, right? And for the purposes of the zoning discussion, were you, were you I, so I was actually, or the other? No, I actually had the same thought Aaron did, which is if we all want to do it, let's all do it. And if only three people want to do it, then only three people do it. But I, I think I the think, threshold is over three, yeah. right? As a corner. I, I suspect that we all want to do it, which is why I'm fine having this other broader discussion to see like what other people's preferences are. But mm -hmm. um, say I, if you're interested in talking about zoning um, apart from a regular planning commission meeting, I. Mm -hmm. 
Aye. Yeah. Um, I mean, that was my assumption all along. Uh, so it so it looks like it makes sense for us to just have a meeting because everyone wants to be there anyway. Could we, um, could, to the extent it's possible, uh, can we be really, could we be specific about what kind of pre-work would be most effective? I'm a little worried that if I just read the changes, I will be like, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> if there's um, any For kind of specific, zoning? yeah, specific stuff I can read, that would be. I mean, Mike will have some materials ahead of time. The way this goes is, I mean, he's gonna, he's gonna give us the background in meeting. Like, like, like he's already, he's already, he's already done that for most of these things. He just did a little while ago. Well, yeah. But, but I don't, I don't know how much, like, there's not a whole lot of pre-work other than what Mike does for this kind of stuff. You should review yeah, put, all, put, the, all the canons of statutory construction, you know, just. Something like, I haven't read already, Aaron. Right, like, like, <laughs> I, I put, I, the memo I put together, which has, which has the 10 changes. It, it goes through with an explanation of a little bit of the background of what it's about and why right. they're making the request. So the only thing that's really going to be the um, kind of the reading the actual zoning change is the, P, the two PUD sections because it's just, you know, there's, there's a request to be able to do it. So I've developed two sets of language. Um, so they're just chunks that are separate from the memo. So that'll be the only one that's going to be kind of this. This is this is what it says, and this is why it's broke down. But I really haven't gone in to explain it. So that one I might have to go a little more line by line. But the other ones, I think, um, the, like the three map changes, I think are pretty straightforward. Once I explain what is the basis behind it. Um, you know, I've taken a screenshot snap of the zoning map to kind of show what it is today and what they propose to change it to. A lot of times it's an area like uh, one of them is Harrison Ave, which is over off of Liberty, hooks over to Maine on using Whittier. So it's just little, but it's all residential three on all sides of it, but it's residential six and a resident on the street can't do a project um, because they don't, the, if they're residential three, they could do the project. And they're like, look, we're residential three on Liberty, on Loomis, on Main Street, all over the place. Everything around us is all residential three. Why can't we be residential three? So that's one of the proposals. Okay, that, that sounds Just like for it. an example, it, it gives you a little bit of a, a context. I'll, I can give you that. And I don't think there's much else that, you know. That sounds perfect. Two other changes so, like that, I kind of explain why they they want the change. Most of the technical changes end up being self-explanatory. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. And Mike, if we if um, I just I just don't want to I don't want to make it seem like I'm trying to like pull something when it comes to it. I mean, I'm trying to give everyone notice that like I I'd, I'd like to get rid of density in some of these places. I mean, uh, do we need to do anything ahead of time? to um, prepare for a discussion like that? Like, would it be helpful for me to write something up and send it out or? Um... Um, I think to the extent that we get, I mean, that's not the first, your, your idea isn't the first one that's kind of come out of the planning commission. Uh, John has proposed removing parking as a requirement. Um, and we've had some lively policy debates on that as well. So um, I don't have anything prepared on that. So I think if we want to change something, I think we'd have to at least have have an idea written up of what. Okay. Yeah. What you're thinking. And, and if you want, you and I can sit down and talk separately offline to kind of go through and say, you know, to really drill into it. And then I can give you some ideas that would go through and say, well, you know, here's one approach we could take um, and then see what the planning commission wants to do with it. Okay, yeah, we can we can plan to do that. It's 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 not technically difficult, the thing I'm talking about. It would be, you know, neighborhood by neighborhood, just having certain neighborhoods not have a, a zoning cap or a density cap. We already do that in some neighborhoods, as hopefully everyone already knows. 
um, just doing it in more neighborhoods that are that are close to the downtown. Yeah, and I think that's just a matter of making sure we have our bulk and massing requirements um, pretty close to what we think is appropriate, because I think that was, you know, I think we've had this conversation before. The idea is that if you've got the bulk and massing of structures, then whether that building that you see there has um, four three-bedroom apartments or eight studios shouldn't make that much of a difference. The building is of identical size and character. Um, it may have some differences in that um, you may potentially expect to have more you know, cars, but I'm not sure that would be true. If you're renting a three bedroom, you may have you know, multiple adults with multiple cars. It doesn't necessarily mean there are gonna be families renting those three bedrooms. Um, you know, I, I lived in a three bedroom um, and it was me and two of my buddies from college. So that resulted in three cars, even though it was one three bedroom apartment. Um, so I don't think it necessarily those, those translate straight through, but the idea is from a character of the neighborhood standpoint, um, we look at bulk and massing rather than the density, um, because the density would say you can do the smaller number of two and three bedroom apartments, but you can't do the eight studios. Um, that's the basic premise. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, you and I can can maybe work together a little bit on so that so that there's more something more developed. So do you want to think about maybe a separate meeting that we try to fit in in early October? Is that the thought? I can get you everything in advance and you guys can have a couple of weeks to, to chew on it. Uh, yeah, late September, early October. Year one. Is, is, uh, how, how are people's calendars? Does anyone anticipate not being too available during those times? Okay. Yeah, I mean, middle, middle, second week of October will be a little bit tricky for me. Um, just because I'll have some presentations at a conference I'll be doing. So I've got to not overload myself for that second week. Is that going to be 11th? I'm a little busy that week too. Yeah, the week of the 11th would be out. That's out for me too, but everything else looks pretty relatively good. Is there a day of the week that works better for people? Do we have to plan around availability of the chambers? That schedule? Um, we do, but I might be able to. I'll, I'll have to find another room other than the council chambers unless it happens to work out. Um, I'll just have to also work with ORCA to make sure that they're available to, to broadcast um, a, a special meeting. So we just can't overlap with other broadcast events. So, um, but I don't think that's, I think there's certain times and days that it's easier, um, but Mondays and Wednesdays are typically difficult so we'd probably be hoping for Thursday, maybe. I don't know how everybody's Thursdays are. Thursday is usually good. The first two Tuesdays are just CBRPC, so I would prefer a Thursday as well. And the third Thursday, I think, is, or the third Tuesday, I think, is the Parks Commission. So my husband's on that, so that would be hard for me. But I, Thursday sounds good. I think Thursday would probably work for me. So Thursday, Thursday in October. 
maybe the uh, the first Thursday, because you said like after, what, around October 11th isn't good. Yeah, I could do the seventh that Thursday. Oh, is that what it is? The seventh? Yeah, that's the first Thursday. Yep. Yeah, that one probably, that Thursday probably won't work for me. I'll have to look. It's my anniversary. I don't tend to schedule things on my uh, anniversary. Well, we won't make yeah. it. Yeah. No. Or I mean, September, se September 30th, maybe. That looks good that. for me. Yeah. Yeah, September 30th could work. We'd have to to get to get the what two weeks notice. We'd have to get that posted, right? Yeah, I don't know if this would be the public hearing. Um, we may, but since it's, I mean, not that it's a public hearing, but just that it's a it's an open. Yeah, the open meeting. meeting the open meeting is uh, is seventy two hours. So oh. uh, we'll get the notice out as early as soon as we know it's a good time that works for everybody, including Orca. Then we'll we'll get it noticed um, as a special meeting. And then okay, let's, ten let's tentatively plan for Thursday the 30th at 5 30 because it's our normal time. All right, so I will firm up that with you guys, and we'll have one more planning commission before then, anyway. So, um, and then uh, I'll email you guys on the reappointments. Awesome. Well, it looks like we've got everything done that we plan to. Anyone have anything else to bring up before we adjourn? Okay. Yep. I'll move to adjourn if we're, if we're there. Motion by Stephanie. Do we have a second? I'll second. Second by Marcella. Those in favor of adjourning, say aye. 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 All right, everybody, have a great night. You too. Thank yeah. you. Mike, thanks for the info on um, the water park. Oh. That yeah. was, uh, a, I was like surprised, but also like, oh, of course, all of these things would need to be taken into consideration. <laughs> so <laughs> I'll, I'll just keep thinking about it. <laughs> yeah, no, it, 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 it actually made it onto city council's priority list. And I don't know it, how it's, but they met to do a strategic planning thing last week or two weeks ago and they uh and on thursday when we i think they'll you know there's going to be it's going to come up in conversation when we start talking about dam removal again that same conversation about water parks is going to come back up and having mm -hmm. creation as a key pillar of our economic development plan you know and suddenly this conversation is going to up and we'll be back to this is great. We'd love to support it if we could do some feasibility studies first that would actually prove that it's okay to do. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's the trick. But yeah, it's 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 been an interesting idea um, that just needs that needs a a champion to kind of get it to go. Um, yeah. And it's a big project. It's one of these ones I, I've tried to tell people when when it, when it comes to these big projects, you know, it, it got to think in about three years, it takes about three years to do a big project. I would think at least, I mean, even just the thought of like, not even with ownership or environmental impact issues, just thinking about like, where would be a put in and where would be a takeout, like the space along the river is that's, that's just uh, a big question in and of itself. <laughs> yeah, and then a lot of times when I talk to people, they're always like, oh, just get in there, rip these things out. And I'm like, uh, you really got to think probably this is a three to five year project to, to from, from the idea to actually big ribbon cutting is probably in that three to five year window. And yeah. Sometimes people don't have the bandwidth to champion something that long, but. Yeah, yeah. I think it's just comes down if it's a council priority, it can happen. And if it's not a council priority, we don't, won't have the resources to put behind it to make it happen. So, right, right. 
Cool. Well, I appreciated the background. That was helpful. Yeah. All right. <laughs> okay. Have a great night. You too. See ya.